Hello and welcome to episode 30 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we're excited to have our special guest, Yuri Misnik. Yuri is the Executive General Manager and CIO at National Australia Bank and was previously the Global Digital CIO for HSBC and a Board Director for Amazon UK and Ireland. Hi Yuri, a warm welcome to you and thanks for being part of the show. All right, thanks very much. Thanks for having me here. That's fantastic. Hi Dave, and a warm welcome to you too. It's exciting to have you both on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back and it's great to have Yuri on the show. Looking forward to the show. Yeah, absolutely. We really are. Uh, in this week's show, we're talking about there are a lot of changes for NAB's business-facing technology teams, including digital and corporate functions across the group, as well as the bank's major investment programs. So, Yuri, what can other CEOs and CIOs learn from the changes that have occurred and are occurring at NAB? That's a great question. And uh, we've thought a lot about um, our tech strategy and our organizational strategy, uh, which relates to technology and how we organize ourselves. Um, and there's definitely several forces which are shaping the way um, the way we look at tech and the way we look at our organization. One of them is uh, we definitely uh, want to uh, move us and move the company much more towards the modern set of technologies, towards the clouds, uh, towards the modern architectures. And we need great people for that. And we also need great environment for these people to work. The second thing is that we are obviously conscious of our cost base and we want to make sure that we deliver uh, technology services to our colleagues uh, and to our customers as efficiently as possible. So one thing which, we, which we've done here uh, in, in uh, NAB is that we've actually reorganized ourselves uh, around a set of technology services uh, and we organized our teams around this services. So we have uh, about 70 different services, could be for example digital online banking could be a service, mobile banking could be a service, a ledger could be a service. And we set up a teams around that, which are fully cross-functional, autonomous teams, they're persistent, and they are fully in charge of their destiny and fully in charge of the service. That means they're accountable for design, delivery, uh, and operations of a particular tech services. That pivots from a traditional project-oriented culture, uh, where essentially everything is a project, towards the services-oriented culture, changed a lot of the dynamics uh, in our team, change a lot of the ways we interact um, with each other, we interact with our colleagues, with customers, with the business, and and helps us to move faster. We're not there yet, so there's a lot of stuff to, to, to a lot of work to, to be done, but that definitely moves us along. Yeah, there's, there has been a lot going on. I've been watching in the, the press of recent times, actually, so there really is quite a lot of movement at NAB. Very exciting times, very exciting times. So there must be some challenges and some uh, interesting uh, situations arising for sure. So, uh, Dave, have you, have you got anything you'd like to uh, add to ask Yuri, questions? Oh, yeah, lots of questions for Yuri. So, Yuri, first off, does the banking industry in general pay attention to best practices of other banks, or, or are they uh, pretty much... Uh, trying to function independent and out innovate each other? Uh, absolutely we are and, and sort of we definitely see a lot of uh, interesting innovation happening in the financial services uh, outside of Australia also not in financial services as well so uh, not only that sort of we have a great team by the way we actually reshuffled our uh, executive management team in technology we have uh, People which just joined us from Amazon, from Scotia Bank in Canada, uh, from uh, I think TD. Uh, it was a bunch of actual international companies. I came from HSBC. Patrick Wright had from came from Barclays. So we're not only just paying attention. We also have people who worked in different banks and sort of can bring this experience uh, to the team. And we also are very active at taking our business and board to the U.S. to go and visit tech companies, fintechs. Uh, we just recently had a, a one-week board visit to the Valley, which they've uh, spent time with Amazon, with Google, Salesforce. It's an older, 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 honestly cool, but definitely modern technology companies there. Um, and we talked to our colleagues in like the, the guys in Capital One and DBS, so the, the teams which are seeing the leaders in, in their space. So definitely try to learn as much as possible. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. So you recalled in this article in IT, uh, IT News, Australia IT News, that uh, you're responsible for uh, 
National Australia Bank's business facing technology team. So that's kind of interesting because I think technology teams in general are becoming more business astute. So we don't get just to the the technicians anymore. We get the technicians who actually understand the business and they're actually pretty effective in terms of the way we're leveraging technology. So t- tell me a bit about that. Uh, I think there's, there's a sort of two parts of it. We, um, we definitely want to create teams uh, and application and servicing team, as I, as I described them, which are cross-functional. That means they have business, UX, BAs, product owners, who are, bit, who are genuine business product owners and bankers sitting there and driving the, the direction of the product. Uh, we also um, we also much more close. We're creating a, a model called one app delivery model, which brings together effectively business and technology into sort of one blended organization. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean the reporting lines necessarily going to get blurred, but effectively the way people work and talk to each other and you know sitting together and and working and having the same KPIs, that definitely helps a lot. So that, that helps our tech guys to understand business more, but it also helps the business to understand technology more because we definitely don't want to uh, to uh, be order takers, but we want business to understand the constraints and, uh, and the enabling uh, sort of capabilities of the tech which we're building. Looks like you're working across the investment program. So, so what are the tricks of the trade in approaching like a board of directors or other C levels to uh, you know get money for investments. Well, what's your what's your advice? General advice to somebody out there who has to do that? I would probably say uh, speak their language and and use something which is uh, relevant to the people. Which is, I mean, it's not a rocket science, right? You need to you know speak the language of the of the party you're talking to. One of the tricks which we uh, we did with our board and with our ELT, which is our our, our group executives. Uh, we spent a lot of time with them. We actually had a, a full day board technology offsite sometime around January, where uh, it was it was one of the offices, and we spent a, a day talking to the board about uh, technology trends, what we see in the market. We brought up Werner Pogels from Amazon to talk to us and talk to the board about it. Uh, we won. Uh, we brought up uh, Professor Peter Wheel, who is the uh, runs the the research center in MIT, the computer research center in MIT, to talk to the board. So it's it's giving uh, the audience a broad perspective on what's happening uh, in the industry and make it relevant to them. Uh, and also, when we come up and talk about what we need, uh, let's say it's investment or it's an endorsement of a technology strategy, we're also coming up with a, a set of metrics which allows the board and the, the group execs to hold us accountable, the metrics which are relevant to them. Uh, it's not like a lot of people love to come up and say, you know, how many APIs do I have or how many, I don't know, what's my you know, deployment cycle uh, or deployment uh, sort of uh, the time to deliver something to production, which isn't interesting, which is important for, for me as a technologist, but it's probably less important for a board. Uh, what we're coming to the board with is saying, you know, we're going to implement this program or, uh, or this change uh, or this service and it will allow us to do 10, 20, 30 percent of uh, mortgage originations fully online without anyone touching it. So we're trying to translate anything tech to a business relevant KPIs. It's not always easy. It's not always possible. You have to find a mix, but that definitely helps the conversation. Those are great answers. I'm going to kick it back to you, Brad. Yeah, that's great, Yuri. Very insightful. Uh, you know, covered so much. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'd like to ask you is there are a, a huge amount of streamlining um, things going on with customer interactions, etc. What decisions at the C levels are being made to make sure that the customers are really feel- feeling that streamlined interaction? Streamlining, it's, it's sort of a, it, it's a good question. I think what we want to make sure that we're trying to be relevant. And this is sort of the biggest driver where uh, in our all the group exec conversation, all the, uh, all the, all the product driven conversation is how can we make sure that whatever we offer to the customer is relevant and it's, a, it's the right time? Um, and yes, sometimes we still have backend systems and processes which you know, force us to be suboptimal. Uh, and and we we're actually tracking this and we're actually trying to fix it. So for example, we want to make sure the customer, once I provided the bank my you know, home address or residential address, uh, I don't need to do it 24 times if I want to apply it to, uh, to another product. Um, so, so we're trying to minimize the number of times I as a customer need to enter something. 
Uh, and every time we contact the customers, we are also trying to make sure that uh, we probably provide the maximum value there and try to combine the touch points uh, into one. Being digital and being self-service and straight through processing, this is one of the big trends which we see. But on the other side, we also see customers still want to talk to us. This is the, the uh, probably uh, the specificity of banking. If you want to uh, you know, invest in your house or buy or, or get a mortgage and buy a house, that's a big decision. And customers in Australia still want to talk to a human being rather than do it uh, fully digital. Uh, we're seeing more digitization, but we still want to have uh, um, uh, face-to-face interaction. And actually, we see this a lot as our competitive differentiator. Uh, and if you talk to, uh, so we had a very great, good session with um, uh, a couple of uh, venture capitalist funds in the Valley, and they say that when you compete with fintechs, fintechs are typically love the platform play, uh, and they're very good at, uh, at platform, but very bad at distributions. And we are actually a good at distribution. We are not afraid to talk to customers. We're not afraid to have a face-to-face interaction. So uh, we see it as a strength, and we want to make sure we build on it. That was a great answer, Yuri. Thank you. And um, you, you, I mean, you mentioned a couple of times your trip to the Valley. And what was your number one takeaway from that particular visit, personally for you, with regards to what's uh, what what's uh, transferable into a NAV environment? I think the biggest thing which we're taking from this is data, uh, data machine learning, and data driven decisions. Uh, this is it's not a trend anymore. That's a reality. And the guys who do it well, they're winning. And the guys who are not doing well, they are struggling. And uh, probably the biggest takeaway, not just for me, but also for for the uh, for the C-level execs and for the board, is that we have to uh, sort of double or triple down on uh, on the pace of with which we try to collect, manage, and democratize data uh, in our environments. Uh, not about open banking. It's not about APIs. It's actually about uh, getting insights from the data which we have, which helps us provide better service to customers and better service to colleagues. That's probably was the biggest, uh, or is the biggest uh, thing which we take out of it. Everything else I can probably spend for another 20 minutes talking about, about different bits and pieces, uh, but they're all sort of more common sense. Yeah, of course. Well, look, Yuri, thanks so much for your time again for this C-Suite show. We really appreciate you. Uh, you know, I know you've got a very, very busy schedule, so your, your time is very valuable and, and we value that time. So thanks very much for being part of the show. All right. Thanks very much for having us here. And thank you, Dave. As always, a pillar of the C-Suite show. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Great having Yuri on. Thanks, Yuri. Thanks, David. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for watching the C-Suite show, everyone. It's, we've covered some great ground. It's been very insightful and, and Yuri's been awesome today. So that's really good. Look, I mean, you can get Yuri on Twitter as well, which is at Ymisnik and the links will be below for, for everyone on, on the show. So I'm at Nelson uh, underscore Heliod. I always forget that one. And David is at David Linthicum. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. Until next week. Thanks very much.